Welcome back. In the previous video, I introduced the concepts uh, or the vocabulary of alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, uh, corresponding angles. We talked about transversals um, and we talked about planes. Well, now we're going to take a look at those angle relationships and we're going to use those to help us prove whether lines are parallel. So you won't have to memorize the theorem numbers, okay? We'll give you the reasons that you'll use in proof and we won't use the theorem numbers. But if two lines are cut by a transversal such that the two alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So our reason in proof will be uh, if the alternate interior angles are congruent, well, that is going to imply parallel lines. And that's all you really have to write. Alternate interior angles congruent implies parallel lines. But make sure you have all of that shortcut. Okay? So something like that might look like this. So we have two parallel lines. They're cut by a transversal. If we get the alternate interior angles congruent, something like that, then we know that line A is parallel to line B. So our statement might look something like this. Uh, I'll number those angles. Um, we'd have to get angle one congruent to angle two. And the next step would be, let's call this step five, and then step six. Well, then we know that line A is parallel to line B. And our reason is alternate interior angles congruent implies parallel lines. Okay, so that would be our reason. So here's our diagram. We've got to have something like that where the alternate interior angles are congruent. And if we know that, then we know the lines are parallel. Okay, let's move on to the next one. If two lines are cut by a transversal such that the alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Well, I'm going to use my diagram above, this one in red. Our reason in proof, alternate exterior angles congruent, and that's really important, you got to have the congruent part implies parallel lines. Alternate and exterior angles don't imply parallel lines, but alternate exterior angles congruent implies parallel lines. And that diagram would have to look something like this. We'd have to get the alternate exterior angles congruent. So maybe we'd have to get angle 3 congruent to angle 4. If we could get 3 to 4 congruent to 4, then we would have parallel lines. And this is the reason we would use in proof. So this proves our lines parallel. The next theorem, if two lines are cut by a transversal such that the corresponding angles are congruent. So if we had diagram here. If we had these two lines, line A and line B, and if they were cut by a transversal such that two of the corresponding angles were congruent. So we could say if those two angles were congruent, say angle 3, well, we'll call it angle 8, and angle 9. If we could get those two angles congruent, we just need one pair of corresponding angles congruent, then the lines are parallel. So our reason in proof would be corresponding 
angles con congruent implies parallel lines. So that or that. Corresponding angles congruent implies parallel lines. Our next theorem, I'm going to use this diagram above here, save a little time. If two lines are cut by a transversal such that the two interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplements, then the lines are parallel. So that would be something like these two angles. So angle 6 and angle 7. Those would be interior angles. They're in the interior region. This is my interior region. And they are on the same side of the transversal. If they are supplements, then the lines are parallel. So we'd have to have angle 6 supplementary to angle 7. And then we would know that line A is parallel to line B. We call this reason 3 and this reason 4. Our statement, I beg your pardon, statement 3 and statement 4. doesn't really matter what reason 3 is, but our reason 4 would be, and there's not much of a shortcut here, interior angles on same side of transversal are supplementary. Implies parallel lines. Interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary implies parallel lines. So these have to add up to 180 degrees. So that one would be x and this one might be 180 minus x. But they'd have to be supplements in order to prove line A parallel to line B. Our next theorem says, if two lines are cut by a transversal such that the exterior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary, the lines are parallel. So this is the same as our previous theorem. It's exactly the same, except for that one thing, and now we're working with the exterior angles on the same side of the transversal. So if we wanted to get line B parallel to line C, We'd have to get the exterior angles, so they have to be in the exterior region, and they have to be on the same side of the transversal. So, like those two angles, if they were x and 180 minus x, they had to be supplements, then the lines are parallel. And our reason, just like we had before, reason and proof, Instead of interior angles, exterior angles on the same side of transversal supplementary implies parallel lines. So there's your shortcut. Not much of a shortcut, but that's what you get. And then theorem 36 says if two coplanar lines are, are perpendicular to a third line, then the two lines are parallel. Coplanar lines, they must be on the same plane. Okay, so they must be lying on the same plane. They're perpendicular to a third line, then the two lines are parallel. So if we have two lines, so call them line A and line B, and if they're both perpendicular to C. So we'd have to be given something like A is perpendicular to C, and B is perpendicular to C, okay? Then we can prove that A is parallel 
to be because they are perpendicular to the same line. A is perpendicular to C and B is perpendicular to C. Be careful here. Some guys try and use the transitive property or substitution, but perpendicular is not transitive, as you can see. If A is perpendicular to C and B is perpendicular to C, is A perpendicular to B? No way. In fact, A is parallel to B. So, perpendicular is not transitive. So be careful with that. And there's really no shortcut for this. Um, just if two coplanar lines are perpendicular to third line, then the two lines are parallel. So that one you'll have to commit to memory. That's your reason. And finally, theorem, our last theorem, theorem 30, the measure of the exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angle. Well, remote is far away. If you ever parked at remote parking at the park, at the airport, you know, you park far away from the terminal. An interior angle of a triangle versus an exterior angle of a triangle. Let's take a look at that. So let's say we have this triangle ABC. I'm going to draw C down here a little bit to help me out. And if we extend that, this angle right here, that's our exterior angle. This would be an interior angle. And we're saying that the measure of the exterior angle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angle. So I would say angle ACD is greater than Angle A and angle ACD is greater than angle B. Okay? It's greater than angle A and it's greater than angle B. So that is theorem 30. The measure of the exterior angle is greater than either A or B. And I can talk about that and prove that to you, and we can do some practice problems with that, as well as proving a bunch of lines parallel in a variety of different ways when I see you in class.